Hey, what's up guys? BJ Dell here with a video tutorial on how to use the iPad Pro, the Apple Pencil, and Procreate to make merch by Amazon Designs. Uh, hopefully I'll keep this kind of short, kind of interesting, give you a few pointers, uh, let you know how I use this to create designs, maybe on the fence about getting a tablet or don't know exactly where to start. Hopefully this will answer some of those questions and provide some alternatives for you. So... A uh, little bit of background on me, I am a full-time graphic designer and illustrator uh, with a primary focus on illustration. That's why I love Procreate. First and foremost, to get out of the way, Procreate is an illustration app. Uh, you cannot do any text through Procreate. So as you can see right there, for Merch by Amazon, that can create some problems. There are workarounds though, and we will get to those towards the end of the video. I'll give you some ideas of how you can still use Procreate um, to do your merch designs even without uh, that text tool on there. So let's go ahead and jump into it here. Uh, I'm using the 12.9 inch uh, Apple iPad Pro. It's the big one. Uh, I personally prefer the larger screen with the bigger real estate. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to work. Uh, of course, you can use the smaller one if you want. Apple Pencil is a must. No matter which one you get, though, you're not going to get the, the pure benefits out of the, uh, the iPad Pro without it. So that is a must to have. Um, Procreate, $5.99 originally on the App Store. It's now $9.99. Uh, did go up in price, but I tell you what, over the past few years, they've added so many features to this. It's crazy. They are constantly updating, uh, doing new stuff, adding new features. It's well worth the money. It's one flat fee. You don't have to pay subscription-based. Uh, it is awesome. Um, on the desktop and laptop, when I'm using those, I use uh, a different program called um, Clip Studio. They do have that out now for the iPad. However, it is subscription-based, so $9.99 a month is a little bit too rich for my blood when you can buy you know, the full uh, PC version for you know, $50, $60 bucks on sale. Uh, so unless they get that sorted out, I think I'm going to stick with Procreate. So let's jump into it here. Uh, as you can see, this is the first screen you see when you start it up. Up to the top right here, we've got a uh, plus sign, so let's go ahead and hit that. This brings up your new canvas, so this gives you a few different options. You can use some industry standard sizes here, or you can also select uh, some of your sizes that you've already used in the past. But for this, uh, we're going to go ahead and create a custom size canvas uh, with the width of the 4500 by the 5400 for the merch. DPI is already at 300, and maximum layers is 18. Maximum layers you do not set. It is set depending on what your width, height, and DPI is. The bigger the canvas, the less number of layers you have that are usable. Uh, honestly, for merch, 18 is overkill. You're not even going to use 18. Uh, if you do happen to run into the problem when you start filling them up, I mean, you can combine layers as you go. Uh, so should not be a problem for you. So let's go ahead and create this and jump into it. And there is our canvas. So kind of run through the uh, the screen you see in front of you here, give you the rundown of what everything means. Uh, we'll start up here on the top left-hand corner. Gallery actually takes you back to where we just were. That backs you out of your canvas. Uh, the wrench icon, this is going to allow you first image to insert a file, insert a photo, or take a photo. Um, this is kind of cool because inserting a file they now on iOS 11, uh, Apple has a file structure system, uh, much like you see like on a PC or, or on a Mac to where you actually have files, uh, which is really cool that you can save and export and import through that system. Inserting a photo is actually through your camera roll, so a little bit different. Uh, canvas selection under actions gives you a perspective guide, allows you to flip the canvas. Sharing is once you're done with the, the canvas, can export to all these different things. Save it as a Procreate file so you can use it on Procreate, send it to another Procreate user. PSD file, yes, you can save as a PSD. So everything you create in Procreate, you can send over to Photoshop. It saves all your layers. It is fantastic. Um, one thing they've added over the years, it used to be you could only export PSD. You can actually import PSD now, which is really cool. Uh, you couldn't do that before. Uh, only, I guess, caveat with that is when you import the, the PSD file, it does have your layers, but it does not save text layers as a separate raster or a separate editable uh, layer. It is rasterized. 
Uh, same thing with any filters, stuff like that. Um, it saves any blending layers, but other than that, anything that you do in Photoshop that can't be done in here, it's going to be rasterized. So uh, you can also export PDF, JPEG, PNG, which is important because we're going to export PNG for our Merch by Amazon files and TIFF. Uh, video allows you to do a time-lapse replay, which is kind of cool, or they started adding live broadcasts, preferences, and then your help button. Next up, with the little magic wand adjustments, here you'll adjust the opacity, Gaussian blur, motion blur, uh, so on and so forth. Adjust your hue, your color balance. Uh, this tool here is basically like a uh, lasso tool that you'll use to make selections, and then the arrow next to it is what you'll use to move those selections. And then jumping over to the far right-hand side, we've got the brush tool, so we'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, the left hand here is all the different groupings of brushes. Uh, right now, I'm an imported in natural anchor. Um, that's my favorite go-to. Kind of gives you a comic book style inking with a taper on the, the end and the beginning. So that's what I go to. It's under-imported because, cool thing with Procreate, you can make your own brushes. Uh, and you can also download brushes off the internet. So you can get on the Procreate forums. Jump on there, find stuff you like, download them. People sell them on Gumroad too, so sometimes free, sometimes paid, but uh, definitely cool that you can add to what's already there. Next uh, over is the smudge tool, the erase tool next to that, your layers button here, which we'll get into layer, later, haha, and uh, the color swatch here, which has got the color wheel and color picker. So starting out, we're going to start out with a sketch, and we're going to go into our sketch and just, I usually start out with like a light blue color to lay down the sketch lines, and we're on this top layer one. Background color is already there. Uh, that you can change the background color if you want to. This will change as you go around. And then later, once we make the PNG file, you'll want to drop it completely out so it does have a transparent background. So like I said, just starting out, we're going to start out on layer one. Um, if you're going to use Procreate from start to finish uh, as far as your design place for your merch, you're going to have to do some other work on another program to get that text into this program. Uh, because of that, I did some legwork already, so I know what I'm drawing. Uh, I know what the basic layout and design is going to be. So we're going to do a cat because that's nice and easy. So let's go ahead and start out with a cat here. Uh, for the sketch layer, I just laid down some pretty simple lines to give my uh, design a kind of layout that I know what look I'm going for. It doesn't have to be real neat, real clean. You can actually go back in when you go to your... Uh, inking process and fix everything. Now you'll see as I'm doing this, I'll make a line and you'll see it disappear like that. Super easy to do that. That's one of the reasons why I love Procreate so much is all the gesture controls they have built into this thing. Uh, so when you see a line like I do there that disappears like that, all I'm doing is taking two fingers and tapping them on the screen. That is the undo button basically. There is an undo button over here on the side where you can undo there, but it's just so much easier when you're holding the pencil and it comes second nature to just go ahead and kick those two fingers on the screen and, and go back. Uh, if you do three fingers, that is to go forward. So if you go back too many times and need to redo it, that's three fingers. Uh, but I tell you what, it is amazing how quick you catch on to it and, and how second nature it becomes. I do a lot of uh, illustration work, too, with just traditional media, and that response and that reaction has just become so second nature as far as making a mistake and hitting two fingers against the screen that I find myself doing it, uh, actually, with my traditional media. So uh, I'll be you know sitting down and drawing on a piece of paper uh, with a pencil or drawing on a piece of paper with a pen, and I'll make a mistake and, and do a line that I don't like and instead of flipping the the pencil over and using the eraser the first instinct I have is I press two fingers against the paper and then of course feel like a complete idiot about five seconds later when I realize nothing's happening so just crazy how the mind and body works together that you can build up these reflexes that you don't even think about doing and it's just it's just nuts but it just tells you how easy it is to use so all right, so basically we've got our design done. Pretty quick, pretty simple. Like I said, going to make this fairly fast. So that's our sketch. 
we're going to go ahead now and go up to our layers and make a new layer because we want to do our lines on top of this layer. So that plus button right there is going to start a new layer. So now we're on this top layer. If you hit the layer again, you see this over to the left, you can actually rename this layer. So if you want to rename the layers to keep them separate so you know uh, just by looking at them, uh, I personally don't. It takes a little bit more time and you get pretty used to where everything's at. But you'll see the other options off to the side there. Uh, you also have select, copy, fill, clear, alpha lock, and mask which uh, are something you've probably used in Photoshop before. Uh, reference, merge down, and combine down, which we'll get into some of those and what they do layer, later. But uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and select this layer for our lines. We're going to jump back down to the sketch layer. With this selected, we're going to go back up here to the adjustments and go to opacity. So what we want to do is drop this down because we're going to be drawing on top of it. So we want to be able to see it, but not too much. And then we're going to go back and select our black color and then go back to our line layer. And then we can go ahead and start laying down the lines. So we'll just make sure we're on our anchor here and start laying everything down. On this slider, I usually like around 20 for the outlines. Uh, the cool thing with the Apple Pencil is that it is pressure sensitive. So when you do these inner lines, instead of dropping that size back down to make the inner line smaller, just don't press as hard and you're good. Saves you time from having to go back and forth changing the uh, the size. So it's definitely a, a quick time saver there. Try to get these evened up to match the best possible. All right. Another thing that you can do is the natural anchor, honestly, any of these, the options here is there's an option to adjust the spacing Streamline, which we're going to use, the jitter, the fall off, so on and so forth. Streamline, we're going to turn up. Streamline, what it does is it actually allows you to make large swooping motions, and it keeps them very clean. So this almost has like a vector look to it. Uh, my hand, honestly, is not that steady, and that's what it does. It basically uses... Uh, some computer processing power to make your lines look a lot better than what they might be just using your unsteady hands. So whenever you're making large swoops like that, I, I find that that's like a really, really good tool to switch to and uh, use that streamline. It gives that, like I said, almost like a vector look. So I'm just going to clean up some of these ends. The one thing with streamlining uh, that it doesn't do, the, the fall off and the taper at the end aren't the best. You don't have a lot of control over it, so I always like to go back in uh, after I'm done with that and kind of clean up the, the taper on the on the lines. So let me get that done here real quick. So I'm not sure how this will turn out. I usually would take more time doing a design and make sure that everything is perfect and kind of using this more as just, hey, here's how you do this. So don't want to bore you with just watching line after line being drawn so I'm try to go through as fast as possible here make it too boring there we go all right and once again down here we're going to use that streamline for the body here's one thing that's cool too is if you're doing a streamline here you've got to worry about overlapping these lines here what you can do is going back up to your layers, go ahead and add a new layer, and that way you don't have to worry about going over that line. All you have to worry about is, all right, does this shape look right? Once it does, then you can go back in. You can erase that line that you just did and not have to worry about affecting that head line that we've already done. And then once you're done, you can kick back by pinching these two together. I've got everything selected now. Taking these two and pinching them together, you can form these back into one layer. So even though they're on separate layers to begin with, you can kick back in there and knock them back down, which is kind of nice because, like I said before, if you're finding that you're using too many layers, that's a good way to, to free up some layers is just combining stuff together. So, all right. With these legs down here coming down the middle, we're going to go ahead and add a new layer again so that we can go back in and erase. I'm going to switch this back to 
streamline off. It's more of the straight lines. I like to do those by hand. It's just those ones that are almost circular that I like to have the streamline on. You'll see a lot of time I do a lot of lines and do a lot of just backing out because I find it when I'm drawing it's almost more the the motion that you get right that makes the line look perfect. If you don't have that right motion, just keep repeating it until it feels right and it looks good. So we're going to go back to the body layer to uh, erase this overlap part here. out real quick and we'll be done with the the outline so so a lot of people ask if you know a tablet something that you should get is it good for merch by Amazon uh, I find it's fantastic um, it's just nice not to be stuck at a you know a computer um, so that's why I really like it um, the other question is, you know, okay, well, I decided I, I definitely want to go with a tablet. Should I do iPad Pro? Should I do the Surface Pro? You know, what should I do? Um, honestly, that's up to you. It's a a preference type of thing. I know people that, that go both ways on it. Um, personally, I had the, the Surface Pro before, too. Uh, iPad being bigger, I like. Surface Pro is a, I mean, let's face it, it's a full-fledged computer, so... Uh, with that, you get less battery life, uh, so that's one of uh, the the things you lose. The The iPad itself, battery life is just insane on this thing. Um, another th cool thing is the, the Apple Pencil, you actually need to recharge. Uh, the iPad can actually recharge that itself. It just plugs into the, uh, the lightning port at the bottom, which is really, really cool, so you don't have to carry around an extra cord if you don't want to. Um, the surface, like I said, it not as good battery life. I do a lot of, uh, drawing on the couch, watching TV and the surface would get hot, uh, because it, you know, is a full computer. So that's another thing to, uh, to take into consideration. But at the same time, if you're getting into the merch and you don't have a computer, if you, you know, mostly use, like, maybe you've got a, a regular iPad now and that's your main go-to thing, or, oh, I get on Facebook with my phone, you know, that's where I usually do stuff, um, it might be good to go with the, uh, the Surface, just because, I mean, yeah, you're getting the tablet, but you're getting a full computer out of it, too, and... I mean, be honest with you, you're not going to be able to do absolutely everything all the time with a, an iPad. Uh, I know Apple says it's the uh, laptop replacement and all that, but I don't think it's there yet. Um, I'm, you know, even myself a huge uh, fan of Apple, and I am not one of those people that thinks that, you know, everything is perfect all the time with them. So there's still some... some Hurdles they have to jump over to, to be able to get these things to totally replace a computer. So that's something to take into consideration, you know, if you're wanting to seriously uh, get into merch and, and do some serious damage with it. I mean, what do you have now? What are you working with now? Um, then also, what's your skill level? What are you comfortable with working with? I mean, uh, are you able to learn? Are you wanting to learn? Are you willing to learn? Uh, hopefully by watching this video, you, you want to pick up some pointers. So I think we're on, you know, the right step there. But uh, definitely all things to consider. So, all right, we got the lines done. Uh, let's go ahead and go back into our layers tab now. Uh, we're going to combine those last two layers that we did. So we've got one here. Pinch those together. At this point, you can go ahead and either uh, uncheck that box to hide the line uh, sketch layer, or if you want to slide it to the left, you can actually just delete it and knock it out. So we're going to go ahead and do the colors now. To do this, go ahead and hit that plus button again. Uh, the layer above it is open now. We need to pull that below the lines. So just push that, click and drag down. You always want your colors below the line layer. Otherwise, if you color on top, it's going to cover up your lines. So um, clicking on this top layer now with the lines, we're going to do that. Click it again, and it brings up this uh, list that we talked about before. What we're going to do right now is we're going to select reference. 
What that does is everything that you do in any other layer underneath is going to reference that top line layer. What this allows us to do is color in super easy. So we're going to make this cat brown. And usually if you're on that line layer, you can just click and drag this over to fill in. We don't want to do that on the same line layer though, because when we go to do highlights, it's actually going to cover up the lines. Uh, likewise, if you would do shadows and you had a line layer that wasn't this dark black that we're doing, it would cover up the lines as well and it would look kind of funky. So we're going to go ahead and select that reference. So everything that we fill in down here now is going to fill it in just like it would if it was the line layer but it's actually on this separate layer underneath. So as you can see, I mean, what was it? Like five seconds, our entire cat is colored, and then it's gonna take another couple seconds to do the ears. Uh, we're gonna do the eyebrows. Do the nose, and then Got to make sure to color in, even though it looks like it. We've got to do the white there, because once you take out this background, since you've got that transparency, that white is actually going to show clear if you don't fill it in. So just keep coming back and selecting the colors. And, whoops. And we are done. So, like I said, that's how fast it is to, uh, to color in this. It's... It's pretty amazing how quick it works. Uh, so we're good there. The one thing I want to do, oh, there's a little part here where the line comes, oops, goes together. So we'll fill that in. Uh, let me clean up this spot, this spot up here real quick. And as you can see, since I erased up there, the line, or the colors didn't go up to that line, so we got to fill those back in. Okay, so we are done now completely with the colors. I said really, really fast. So we're gonna go ahead now and make a new layer for the shadows. So we'll hit that plus button again. So the shadows then are in between the lines and the colors. So we're gonna go ahead and select a black for the shadows. Uh, this is a, a nice easy way to do this as well. If you select the color layer, hit it and select it. What this is gonna do is on this layer here for the shadows, it's going to allow you to color only inside what's colored right now. So, if you try to go outside of the lines, it will not let you. This is a huge time saver because you can go really big and really messy to lay down some thick shadows. You can clean these up later as we go along, um, but this allows you to cover up a lot of space in not a lot of time. And... I know it looks a little weird now because everything is this pitch black and you're like, oh, you can't see anything and it's going over. Well, there's a few different ways that you can add shadows. Uh, one of the ways that takes a ton of time is if you look at each one of your colors on your canvas and think, okay, well, this cat's this kind of greenish brown color, so I've got to find the darker version of that. And okay, now these eyebrows are a different color, so what's a darker shadowed version of that and oh well I gotta do the nose and what's the shadowed version of that with doing it this way we're filling it in all black and then what we're gonna do is go in and adjust the opacity so what it's gonna do is basically add a drop shadow to everything and still allow the color underneath it to kinda come through so it's gonna make all those colors just the darker versions of themselves so what that does is just frees up a ton of time, takes out the guesswork of what colors look like the shadow color, and allows you to kind of continue on and get a lot done very quickly. So I'll just finish this up here. And of course, we got the uh, light coming in from the right there, or from the left, so we want the shadow to be here on the right. Uh, also, if you have a spot like this you want to click and drop in, we've still got the line layer as a reference. If you take that off, that'll actually allow you to drop that in and fill bigger spots in at once. 
makes it a little bit faster as well. There's always things you'll find as you're going along, and you're like, oh, man, I could do this like this, and it'll save me so much time, and there's a lot of cool little tips and tricks, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do the video. I'm sure a lot of people want to see, you know, what it's like to use the iPad for merch. Some people, I'm sure, already have one, and hopefully you'll kind of get some time-saving tips out of this to, to speed up your process, so... All right, we're going to add a few more shadows here into the ears. It's coming along pretty good and pretty fast, so. And then I always like to add shadows in under the eyes, too. Do that. Like I said, you can be pretty messy because once you're done with this, you can go back in and do an erase tool and it'll clean up a lot of the lines give you some better edges and stuff like that so all right i think we're pretty much done with the uh the shadow so what you need to make sure you do now is click off up here on the arrow click off of that selection because if you would go now and adjust the opacity it's only going to adjust what's selected right then if you have to go back and add to it it's going to go back in black. So now that we've got that deselected, we can go up here again to our adjustments, go to opacity. It's just like we did for the line layer uh, when we were doing our sketch and just drop this down. You see the change. So we want to get it to where it's dark, but not too dark to where you can still, sh you know, tell it's a shadow. So I think about 42% is good. So go ahead and clear that back out. And then, like I said, now you can kind of just go back in and clean up those lines. There's some spots here that, you can see mist and, and stuff like that. So you can get it all cleared up, and I think that's pretty good. So one other thing I'm going to do is add one more shadow layer here to add some shadows in the ears. And then if you remember, we added that shadow underneath the eye. Since this shadow or this eye is already shadowed, it doesn't really look like there's an extra shadow under the eye. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. And then with this, you'll do the exact same thing as you did with the uh, the other one. Um, the other shadow layer is just drop the opacity down and you're good. So there we go. Another thing you can do too, uh, you'll see like pretty much this entire right hand side is shadowed. Um, what we can do to add a little bit of highlights without actually adding highlights is just remove some of the shadow on that edge that's facing our light source. All right, so there we go. Now we're actually going to go in and add highlights to it. Same thing as doing the uh, the shadows, go and do the plus on the layers. We're going to put this above the shadow layers, and then you'll just want to go in with white. With shadows, I add quite a bit. Uh, highlights, not nearly the same amount. I don't think you really need as many highlights to give the idea as you do a shadow. Shadows are really good at kind of building up the, the design and adding some depth and stuff like that. Uh, so I like to use the highlights a little bit more sparingly. Likewise, since I'm not using a lot, I don't go in like I did before and select that color layer like we did to keep everything defined and inside the lines really not a reason if you're not using that many uh, you just want to make sure that you're checking at the end that you didn't go out of the lines because right now if you did you're not going to be able to tell since everything's white uh, since we've got that background on as soon as you drop that background out you might see oh i really messed up on that one and you know i went out the lines big time so you're gonna have to clean that up before you export the png because otherwise if you put it on a dark color shirt, you're going to have a nice white line. So, all right. So, we've got the white there for the shadow or for the highlights. So, we'll just click the adjustments again, drop the opacity down, and that looks good there. One thing to keep in mind with opacity is you might have to make uh, more layers on the highlight side because uh, with opacity on a dark color is going to look a lot different than what it does on a light color. So, a like this is a pretty dark cat right now. So the opacity isn't down a whole, or it's down quite a bit to where if it was on a, like, let's say bright yellow, uh, you had that in the, the canvas too, uh, and you had it all in one layer, 
the opacity of the white is not going to look the same on that bright yellow as it is on this dark color. You're maybe not even going to see it at all. So you'll probably want to make a, a separate one just for that. So, all right. So we are done then with, add a little bit here. We are done then with the, uh, the design itself as far as the cat goes. So what we're going to do is we are going to go back up here to our layers. And we are going to go ahead and click and drag everything together. So everything is all in one layer now. We can move and resize the cat. If we had done that before, uh, making all those one layer, it would only move and resize the colors or move and resize the shadows. So you need to group them all together. So it is all one now. So the next step then, and the final step uh, in the design is adding in the text. So like I said, no text tool, what do you do? Well, from here, you could export this as either your PSD file or your PNG, put it into your other program to put text in, or you can do the legwork on those programs and drop it into here. Um, usually, I would drop it into another program, but since I'm recording this screen all at once and doing a Procreate thing, I'm going to drop it into here just to show you how to stay inside this one program. So, uh, like I said, already did the legwork, had all those built beforehand. So, I'm going to go ahead and import those by going up to the wrench icon, image, and insert a file. Like I said, this is the, the file side of things, new in iOS 11. So, we're going to go ahead and click on Cats. You kind of know, uh, want to know ahead of time, too, how you're going to have your design set up uh, with this to make it usable I had to actually do two different uh, fonts or two different uh, text files because the way I was gonna have it set up I needed to be able to reposition them um, so because of that I've got them as two separate ones so I can kinda adjust and make it fit the canvas and make it fit with the cat uh, likewise then you can change the cat if you need to to make it fit so, okay, so right there we have, that's pretty much the, uh, the final design. We can go ahead and pinch these two together, make one file uh, layer there uh, for the, the text, and then we've got the cat on the second one. Uh, one other thing we want to do, black text, this is going to go on a light shirt. Do you want to put this possibly on a light shirt, Well, or on a, a dark shirt? Well, we need to have the uh, alternate version then. So what we're going to do here with the cats are fun to draw text layer selected, we want to slide this to the left and we want to duplicate it. Now that it's duplicated, we'll go ahead and turn the bottom one off and hide that. And then we want to select white from over here. And then if you click and drag and just drop your color into the letters, this will totally take out the letters and turn them completely white. Another option for this would be if you went to the layer, select layer, fill layer. The only thing with that selecting and filling I found on text, sometimes it leaves a feathered effect to it and that doesn't look good on white text. So it's easier to do it this way. And there you have it. So now you've got the, the version that's going to go on a dark shirt and you've got the version that can go on a light shirt. One final thing I want to show you is distressing is really big, adds a little bit more to the design. Uh, so on this, I'm going to show you how to distress the uh, text version of this. I don't really want to add the distress to the cat. I think uh, that's going to be too much, but just doing it on the, uh, the text here. So once again, we're going to go back into insert a file, and I've got this distress PNG saved. Got to make sure it's a PNG. You got to make sure it's transparent background, because what you're going to do is you're going to select all this black here. So we're on the inserted image here. If we click that and hit select, anything that's black there that's not transparent, it's going to select. And then if you go to the white, hit that, hit it again, and hit clear. That's going to remove anything from that white cats are fun to draw layer that's selected on the distress layer. So there you have it. There's the white distressed logo text. And now we're going to do the black one. So to do that, same thing, go back to your distressed inserted image, select, go to your black, select that one, and then go to clear. And that's going to remove any and all of the distressed that shows up. 
So from here, everything is done. Last thing you need to do is drop out the background. So that way you've got the transparent background PNG file that's ready to upload to your Merch by Amazon account. Last thing you need to do, go to your wrench icon and share. So this is where you can share it out. This you need to save as a PNG, of course. Now, this brings up a few different options. Save to Dropbox, save image, et cetera, et cetera. You can actually save to Google Drive from here, email it, whatever you want. One thing you do not want to do is save image. Uh, since iOS 11, saving a PNG with a transparent background to images, which goes to your photo uh, roll, it actually adds a background into it, just white or black, um, does not leave it transparent. So what you want to do here is you want to go to save to files. That's going to save just exactly what you saw. It's going to save the PNG with a transparent background that is ready for Merch by Amazon. Uh, and then once you do that, you want to go back in and just switch out that so you've got the alternate version. So that way you've got two designs basically out of one. So, all right, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Anything else you'd like to see me cover, please let me know. And I appreciate your time, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.